Hello and welcome! Today I'm in the tier 8 Japanese cruiser, the Mogami, and I'm using these modules and commander skills. Now, I'll explain why I picked these skills and modules at the end of the video. However, patch 0.6.4 buffed the Mogami in a major way, at least in my opinion. Even though the only change that they actually did was that they buffed her turret traverse from 51.4 seconds to 36 seconds. Yet, I do think that this is a very major buff for Mogami even in survivability. Why survivability? Because I think the Mogami's greatest defensive asset is her maneuverability. However, you can't utilize, um, or she couldn't utilize her maneuverability in the past while still firing her guns. So you had to pick either to fire your guns or to maneuver. And obviously that causes some problems with uh, trying to stay alive while still being effective. However, uh, with the newest patch, you can do both of them at the same time, so you can dodge a lot. And you will have to do that a lot, because ships, because enemy ships, quite like shooting at the Mogami, because she tends to be a fairly good target. However, because you can get your rudder shift to um, 3 seconds, well, you can make their life quite difficult. And um, if you're wondering why you should, why I picked the 155mm caliber guns over the 203s, then the main reason is damage output. You see, when you go, you see the 155 caliber guns have uh, a 10 second reload and there are 15 of them. If you switch to the 203s, you get a 15 second reload and you have 10 of them, which means that you end up dealing half the damage output of the... Um, 155s and I think that's a bit of a too big of a compromise to make considering with IFE G now you don't actually need it for the HE penetration. So so far I haven't really done much in this match but it's a match on the map loop and uh, there are many enemy battleships. It's also a tier 9 match and um, I'm not going to get much smoke here because if you look at the minimap you'll see that uh, I'm pretty much alone on this side of the map and there are at least two battleships here. And I will be fighting this Terpitz on my own, but because I have really good maneuverability, I will try to utilize it to the fullest. Also, did you just see that? That was a 7000 HE salvo. And that was only 10 of the shells hitting, you know, I could still hit 5 more. Although, of course, uh, you have to remember that if your shells shatter, you don't deal that much damage. Now, people might think that the new Mogami is going to be some amazing fire starter because you have so many HE shells. Well, that's not quite true. I mean, you do start a lot of fires, however, you don't start um, an insane amount of fires. For instance, the Zhao will start more fires. However, here's the thing. The Mogami actually has a higher HE damage per minute number than the Zhao does. And in fact, the only tier 10 uh, heavy cruiser that has a higher HE damage per minute number is the Des Moines. Uh, the Moskva, the Zhao, the... Hindenburg, they all deal less HE damage. Which is why I think the new Mogami is quite a monster, because she can survive while still firing her guns. So I've been fighting this Terpitz now, and as you can see, the Terpitz isn't really firing her guns at me anymore. And why, why would that happen? You see, she did try firing earlier on, right? But she missed because I dodged. And I keep dodging, and I keep staying at this 15 km range where I can still fairly easily hit her, but she tends to have quite a bit of trouble hitting me. So, you are somewhat like a Habarovsk, but you're obviously not that fast, and you will still get hit unlike the Habarovsk. However, you also have a lot of damage output, and um, your shells are much less likely to shatter. And, you know, you're tier 8, so you don't tend to face as uh, strong opponents. And basically, this is something the Mogami can do. She is incredibly deadly against tier 7 and lower battleships, and even the higher tier battleships really don't like fighting her. Because she just deals so much damage, and she still has a lot of maneuverability. Now, what you do want to do is, you do want to stay, I don't know, at least 13 kilometers from pretty much anything big that wants to shoot you. You might stay closer to cruisers, but to battleships, you don't. You really don't want to stay closer than that. Because they will start hitting you, and um, they will hit you really, really hard. Because if you have noticed, I only got hit like a few times, and you know, I've lost already one third of my health. 
Oh, and uh, that's a wither plus arsonist already on that Tirpit. And the poor Tirpits really didn't seem to be able to do all that much, right? I mean, he even tried running away, but that didn't work out either. Oh, and um, there's a destroyer over there. I know there were only two in this game, but uh, this ship is actually really amazing at killing off destroyers, if you can hit your guns. You see, 15 guns with a 10 second reload means that you will take them out really, really rapidly, and your single salvos, if they hit a lot of shells, will also deal a lot of damage. I only hit 3 shells there, but obviously she still took 2000 damage, and considering my range, I think that was a fairly good salvo. Now, other cruisers also don't really want to fight you, as long as they're not like, um, perhaps the Germans might, because you tend to show a lot of broadside, so if they keep firing AP, they might um, be able to fight you off. And since you mostly want to fire HE, you might not um, deal with them as quickly as uh, other cruisers might. Also, uh, the reason why the ship is so strong against tier 7 battleships and lower is because your HE shells can penetrate ships like the Colorado and the Nagato pretty much everywhere, which means that your HE shells will deal a lot of damage, like ev almost every single salvo. Obviously the same applies to cruiser cruisers as well, and uh, this is why I focused on Miyoko instead, since she is closer and easier to hit. And again, like I mentioned, you, you don't really focus on fires. While getting fires is nice and it's definitely a useful part in it, that isn't always the main focus. Your HE damage output should be a higher priority, at least in my opinion. And well, there's the Miyoko gone, so the next is this Colorado. And this Colorado will take a lot of damage, you'll see. She has, she has 44,000 health at uh, 9 minutes and 40 seconds. Let's see how long it takes until she falls quite a bit lower. So I got quite lucky there, actually I guess it might not be lucky with the fire. Although I would say that I have got quite lucky in this game with fires. A 12 fires in 192 hits. With a 10% fire chance, that is quite significant, I would say. And uh, see, this is what happens if you don't dodge properly. You have to dodge really, really well. And your really fast rudder shift helps with that. So 30 seconds have passed and the Colorado has lost uh, 12,000 health already. And she is... She mo Never mind, she's not burning, she is healing. And another s almost 7,000 HE salvo that even started a fire. Okay, this salvo wasn't as good, so I switched to the Kagara over here because first of all the Colorado is behind the island and second of all the Kagara is showing a broadside. That's a high caliber, unfortunately I missed my salvo, so I'll take another shot at the Colorado. And I start turning away. So again, what you need to do on the ship uh, to be successful is you need to dodge, like a lot. But you also need to make sure that you actually end up firing your guns. And this is one of the reasons why I think the um, turret traverse module, which pretty much nobody ever takes otherwise, that is why I think it's important, because your guns are able to keep up with your um, ship turning, even though you have so much maneuverability. And well, there's the Colorado gun. And I would say I've done quite a significant portion of that damage. So now it's time to focus on the Kagero, because... Uh, she is the only ship in range right now, and then after that I suppose we'll go for the Amagi over there. She still has almost full health, so this should be an interesting fight. I mean, I'm down to one third of my health. I've already done 180,000 damage though, so I, I would say that even if I were to die here, I've already done my part. And uh, it's up to everybody else to uh, do something. By the way, look at the minimap, look at the top right corner. That's a North Carolina. And that guy is gonna get reported for being a bot, because... I don't really see how you could explain not being a bot and being in that corner right there. So, it's a fight against Yamagi. Again, remember, try to stay at long range, over 13 kilometers, and try to dodge and anticipate their salvos, and utilize your rudder shift well. 4000 damage HE salvo on the first shot. By the way, one thing I will note, I will mention though, Fighting an Amagi is actually quite difficult, because um, she has a really big um, uh, torpedo belt, and uh, when HE shells hit the torpedo belt, they will show up as penetrations, however, you won't deal any actual damage. 
any caliber gun to any torpedo belt of any thickness will will not deal any damage. Even if it does a penetration, it won't deal any damage. So Bismarck also came, and I think the Bismarck is a bigger focus right now, because I can angle away from the Amagi while still firing at the Bismarck. But I think this game is actually going to end very, very soon. Okay, I went down to 5,000 health. I know dodging shellfire from two ships at the same time is quite difficult. Also, I'm, I can't really wait until um, somebody pairs the ship with uh, something like a Kutuzov so you actually get access to smoke screens. That will be even more brutal, and I don't think you would really want to attack into that. Now, the downside of this ship obviously is the same downside as pretty much every other tier 8 ship, which means that uh, which is that you get into tier 10 matches, and your range isn't exactly great for that. However, Barring that, you should still do fine, and it's not like any of the other tier 8 cruisers don't suffer from the same issue. And I think the game is over. Unfortunately, we did not get to uh, roast this Amagi, but we did get to roast uh, Tirpitz from essentially full health to dead. And there was very little that Tirpitz apparently could do to me. And there's the game. So, again. I think the new Mogami is going to be an excellent ship in terms of uh, dealing damage with HE. And um, that will obviously cause fires and it will obviously also deal a lot of HE damage, which is going to be quite difficult to avoid. However, everything on the Mogami pretty much rests on dodging. So I got the high caliber, high caliber arsonist uh, witherer and the confederate and I was number one in XP at 2300. So let's report the bot for being a bot and... Um, Here's the damage output, and as you can see, fire damage was not actually the majority. Only 75,000 of the damage was fire damage, 133 was actual direct HE damage, in 14 minutes too. So yeah, I think the new Mogami is going to be an excellent ship. So let's talk about the loadout you would want on the Mogami. I would recommend going for 155mm caliber guns, and then in terms of modules, or sorry, upgrades, I would get obviously main arms modification 1 because you don't want your main batteries to be broken. Then in the first offensive slot I would recommend the standard damage control system modification 1 on cruisers. And now in the second offensive slot I would actually recommend main battery modification 2. I know that it's a really unpopular upgrade because it increases your main battery loading time which is obviously uh, bad. However, it also increases your main battery traverse speed by 15%, and I think actually that this upgrade is really, really important on the Mogami. And the reason is that if you take this upgrade and Expert Marksman, your, your main batteries are able to track ships while you do a full turn, which means that uh, you can utilize your maneuverability fully while still tracking a target and firing your guns. Now in the second offensive slot, I definitely recommend steering gears, and in the third defensive slot, I also recommend steering gears. With both of these together, you actually get the rotor shift time of 3.4 seconds. And with a speed flag, you get a maximum speed of 36.2 seconds with a 750 turning circle. So you are really, really maneuverable, especially for a cruiser. Now in terms of captain skills, I would recommend going for priority target to find out uh, how many ships are uh, detecting you or targeting you. Definite, you definitely want expert marksmen. And then I would go for Demolition Expert, then IFHE, because you need IFHE on 155mm caliber guns, otherwise you will shatter a lot more of your, of your HE shells. If you don't have IFHE, I don't really recommend playing 155 caliber guns. And then you go for Concealment Expert, and then Adrenaline Rush. And with the last three points, I'm not actually quite sure what to go for. I went for Vigilance, but I think an equally... Um, good choice would be survivability expert. Now obviously um, these two are kind of useless, uh, basic firing training is kind of useless because your anti-air output just isn't strong enough anyway. Superintendent is kind of useless because you'll just have one extra hydro and plane, that's really not that important. And basic survivability would be quite okay but you probably are going to damage on any fires you get, so that's not as big of a buff anyway. Now I will say though, one really big downside on the 155 Mogami is the fact that 
you can't utilize this captain on any other ship, especially if you go for things like IFHE. There just simply aren't other ships that this captain would be good on in the Japanese cruiser line, because the Zhao, the uh, Ibuki, the Miyoko, none of them want to have this because they use 203 guns instead of 155s. So if you want to simply pass the Mogami, I guess you might want to instead go for the 203 guns instead of the 155s. In which case, this video doesn't really mean anything. But yeah, I think this, this new Mogami is really really good because she has so much damage output while still being somewhat able to survive by dodging. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then like it and I would like to thank the Patreons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Ikaros. And I hope I see you guys next time.